get this presentation organized. I was going to do a little gimmick, hold the paper, and read. My name is Anshul Kapoor, and I'm here to talk about. Um, well, first of all, I want to thank counselors uh, Ainsley Moser and Crawford uh, to making sure that this is not considered a downtown issue. This is a city issue. This is an issue that will impact the city for generations to come. 30, 50, 100 years When we speak about uh, infrastructure, when we speak about $150 million uh, being uh, put together for whatever Jeff Wilson spoke about. Um, it, they are not taking into consideration what happens 30 years down the line. What happens 50 years down the line. Thank you, Troy. Please troll on Twitter. Um, <laughs> but we'll, we'll continue um, if we go on. So key things that I wanted to focus on was uh, who's no Jets to you? We, we, were, we were a small organization. We were. Not anymore. Uh, what's the current situation? Why are we talking about this? Why Porter's Jets plan are no, or not modest? Why we don't, why No Jets CEO doesn't talk in marketing spin? Uh, how Porter and TPA want your tax dollars? They should pay taxes! <laughs> Everyone should. Uh, how, how your waterfront revitalization will be impacted, there's other concerns and some parting thoughts. But before we begin, um, I hope this loads, but... Kind of? Technical glitches? Alright! It happens. But essentially what it was, 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 a, was a prediction by Robert F. Kennedy in 2003. And uh, what he said was, if you build it, they will come and they will be Jets. And he made that prediction in 2003. And Robert F. Kennedy is, is the chair and lead and the founding member of uh, Waterkeepers, uh, an organization that fights for water and water safety around the world. Lake Ontario Waterkeepers are involved in this fight as well. Who's no Jets TO? We are a nonpartisan citizens coalition. What do we want? Simple. Keep the promises that were protected and promised by the tripartite agreement. We, don't, we oppose the island expansion. Uh, we support the mixed use uh, waterfront uh, revitalization and, and the vision. We don't oppose the island expansion, oh sorry, the island airport in itself, it's there, it works, it's there till 2033, keep it there. Next slide please. Key thing that I wanted to mention was the fact that this is a city-wide issue, so what you see here is support for No Jets to Yield from Etobicoke to Scarborough, downtown to the north. Everyone understands this, and we want our city councillors to understand this as well. Uh, we have support from a broad base of endorsers, whether it's student unions, uh, MPs, former mayors, former city planners, Margaret Atwood, Labour Council. It just grows, grows, grows. When people hear about why we're fighting about this, they understand. They understand the generational impact. Let's look at what's happening right now. The airport has grown from 26,000 passengers in 2006 to 2.3 million in 2012. Majority of the growth has happened since 2009. So between 2006 and 2009, there was limited growth, but 138% of the growth is since 2009. Why is that? Because Toronto Port Authority arbitrarily decided to increase the slots of the airport, increase flights at the airport. And what, uh, what they did was, was, was increase, is increase the travelers that are coming to this airport. Now, what are the other stats? 70% of the people who come to this airport come by private vehicle. Cars, taxis, they don't use public transit because they want to get from one place to another as fast as they can. Cars. 
Thanks, Troy. Um, traffic problems uh, since have not been addressed by the Toronto Port Authority. They have not, no matter what they say, because they keep increasing. But they did spend $84 million on a tunnel. Where's the tunnel? It's at the airport. It's at the end. So it doesn't, it doesn't solve the problem of how you get to the airport. It solves the problem of what you do when you're already there. So if, if Toronto Port Authority already knew about traffic problems that will persist, if they had a vision for this airport, they would have worked with the city and figured out how to work that out. But they didn't do that. They looked at their own private growth and private wealth and said, how do I make the lives of my airport visitors better? But ignore the city completely. This is a number to focus on. As it stands, Porter flies at a maximum capacity of 60% passenger load. And that's 2.3 million people every year. So without any expansion, without us doing anything, if Porter can actually fly as many people as Air Canada and WestJet do out of Pearson, it grows up to 3.8 million people without us doing anything. Without Porter just being a good airline. That's it. 3.8 million people. How are we going to accommodate that? That's the question that we need to answer. Expansion? The hell with expansion. Figure it out later. Answer this question first. Now with the expansion, the proposed the growth is 4.8 million people. That is bigger than Ottawa International. And if we've flown into Ottawa International, or even make it less simple, just go on Google Earth and, and, and look at the size of Ottawa International versus this airport, and you'll see the difference, and you'll see what the constraints are, and you'll see where this airport lies and why jets were banned from this airport. It was not a technology issue. It was more along the lines of vision. Mr. Duluth, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Cabral, you guys have vision. But unfortunately, it's myopic. It's for your company and for your... What we're asking for is vision for the city. What happens 30 to 50 years down the line? Well, let's skip this. I've already said this. So, uh, actually, uh, Mr. Wilson actually hit this um, point when he said this, but I want to use this quote as well. Water from Toronto has raised concerns about this expansion, and, and, and their quote is great. At what point does the island airport stop being an airport in a thriving, revitalized waterfront and become an airport overwhelming the waterfront? At what point? What is it? Was it 1 million? Was it 1.5 million? Is it 2.3 million? Is it 2.5 million? Is it 3.8 million? Is it 4.8 million? How big? Is this airport going to be? And when we ask Toronto Port Authority that question, we get our vision is to have a world-class airport. I'm sorry, sir. We ask for a vision of how big do you want this airport to be? Just ask to answer that simple, simple question. What's your vision? What's your plan? Even your master plan doesn't address that. So let's look at uh, what they don't talk about. It's the fact that we, we use we hear uh, marketing spins such as modest runway extensions. Two football fields at the end, east end, west end. Two football fields is not modest. And this is a report from Transport Action Ontario, an independent activist transport group. And they say clearly that when you extend the runways, you will have to extend the marine exclusion zones based on their study of uh, TP312, the Transport Canada regulations, and essentially the western gap will be closed. Absolutely. Uh, what they don't want to talk about is, is the size of uh, Ottawa Airport. I already hit that, please go. And what they also don't want to talk about, and at the end of the day, this is a jet. This is a Q400, this is a 737, this is a Boeing 737-700, this is a CS100. It is the size of a 737 and it's going to land on our waterfront. This doesn't make sense now. This will not make sense in the future. I 
can ask you. Oh, uh, one back, one back, one back. Let's, let, let's pay attention to this one. Sorry, two more minutes, two more minutes. I'm gonna wrap up. Next one. Oh, that's bigger, but uh, let's focus on this. That's our taxpayer dollars being invested. $1.4 billion invested in waterfront revitalization, our money. $456 million invested in Union Pearson Express will be up in 2015. I don't know if that's what's scaring these guys. I don't know, but maybe it is. But that's our money. $300 million is what the city report says, up to $300 million would be required for infrastructure to accommodate this expansion. And the Toronto Port Authority was so good to ask for money on behalf of the city without talking to the city for $100 million of, once again, our public funds to serve them. But that, that's a, 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 that's, uh, two quotes, if I can. One more minute. Thank you. I want to read a quote from uh, the Toronto Port Authority, uh, what was it, uh, 2009 annual report. This tripartite agreement prohibits the use of jet aircraft except for emergency medical evacuations. The TPA has no intention of seeking amendments to the tripartite agreement to allow commercial jet aircraft to use the BBTCA as we believe they are inc incompatible with the densely populated, mixed-use community surrounded by recreational and cultural amenities. That has not changed. So what's changed? Next slide, please. Mr. Deleuze said that the risk Porter faces from bird strikes is reduced by the type of aircraft it flies. We're using turboprops, he said. They handle bird strikes better than jets. What's changed? I've been asked to cut it out, so I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm going to end it. I'm going to end it. But thank you very much for having us here, and thank you for giving us the voice.